Okay, you guys, uh, this is a tutorial on how to do a site plan. And typically, a site plan will look like this. Um, you'll have your property lines, and note the property lines. It's dash, long dash, two small dashes, long dash. So that's the uh, pattern. Um, so um, this is a professional one. You don't have to go this far. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show you a site plan that most likely you will do. And it will look something similar to this, where you're not gonna put any dimensions, uh, but you will put a roof, you'll put uh, notable features like grass, concrete, if there's a pool, a gazebo, uh, definitely some foliage, put some trees and bushes, sidewalks, etc., etc. And so, uh, oh, also another thing that you will put is a north arrow. You have to indicate which way is north so um, the client can identify uh, which way is north. Okay, uh, another thing that, that you can identify are um, sidewalks. Um, and then sometimes you'll have sidewalks, I don't know why I didn't print out, but you have sidewalks and then you'll have a patch of grass and then you have the street. Um, you don't have to worry about the center line of the street, but you should definitely label the street. So, um, this one had a back alley. Um, so don't worry about that. Most of you don't, but if you do, uh, you can just label it alley. Um, all right, so how to do a site plan. Here we go. Uh, I print this out because I'm gonna use the dim these dimensions for my site plan, 130 by 50 by 130. So it's, it's pretty much a square. Um, so first things first, um, and actually I, I might improvise on that. I'm not exactly sure that um, this house is going to fit. So I photocopied my, um, Floor plan, this is the second floor plan. I also photocopied the first floor plan. It's here somewhere. Ah, here it is. And I wanna see how I'm going to do this roof. Uh, so since this matches up kind of like this, these corners match up right here, and the stairs match up, I know that the footprint down here is pretty much what I need. Um, and a little bit of the roof over here. So um, this balcony extends above the garage, but I know the roof is going to be I want to make the roof to cover over the balconies and um, they need to overhang. I want them to overhang over um, the edge uh, two feet. I'm just going to make it two feet easy on myself, but you know, um, you can do 18 inches. Uh, that's pretty standard, but two feet, two feet's good uh, for this exercise um, because it's easy to do it on a small scale. Now, I, I photocopied this on purpose so I can get all the dimensions. And uh, if I need to write on this, I'm not writing on a, an original. So preserve your originals, um, do yourself a favor. Uh, you can get an all-in-one printer, scanner, copier. I think they're anywhere from 30 to 50 bucks, um, you know. Uh, I know asking you to buy one in the middle semester is kind of, um, kind of a little late, but, uh, if you can, great. If you can't, uh, we'll just, we'll just work with what we got. So here we go. I went ahead and laid down a, a white piece of paper so you guys can see through, but I did cut me a piece of tracing paper. And what I want to do is I want to draw out, 
this portion right here. I want to draw out this portion because I need to, first of all, when you show a site plan, let me bring this back. Actually, I think this one would be much more clear. When you draw a site plan, you'll notice that the edge of the building is done in a hidden line and the roof of the building is done in a solid line. Just like so. Right? Hidden. And then the edge of the roof is solid. So the walls underneath, and we're only showing the outline of the building. We're not showing any walls on the inside, just the walls on how it's shaped on the outside. And then I'll get into how to do the roof. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna use, um, so determining scale. That's another factor. So, uh, so the width of my structure is 35 and a half feet max. And the width of my site plan is 50. So this site plan will work. Um, I just um, took this from last semester and then I took this from work. So uh, we can utilize uh, this site plan uh, dimensions and configuration of the house will fit th fit on there nicely. So I'm just going to um, change it up a little bit. I'm going to put the garage right here and I'm going to put a sidewalk going in the middle of the street. And that's pretty much it. Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Here we go. Uh, let's see, 130 feet. So I want to see how far I can go with this. And it looks like I can go up to at uh, 332 scale, 25, 125 feet. And that is not going to fit. So I'm going to fudge the numbers a little bit. I'm just going to say it's a hundred. Um, yeah, just for this assignment. If you guys have issues with uh, the length of your site being well over this, fudge the numbers a little bit. And, you know, just just know that this is an assignment. And when you actually go to do this stuff on CAD, um, you can't fudge nothing. It has to be perfect. So, um, anyway, so this right here I'm going to utilize to just uh, do up the floor plan and or actually you know what I'm just going to do the site plan um, I'm sorry not the site plan the uh, property lines and then I am going to do the after the property lines I'm going to put the site in the middle and so I know I have 50 this way and 100 this way so I'm gonna go ahead and use 332nd scale for all of this. The scale has to be uniform. And so I'm gonna write really light 332nd scale. And now let's begin. So I know from here to 100, I am going to try and center this as much as I can. I'm not gonna really do the math on it. I'm just going to eyeball it on both sides and call it a day. So I know I'll need the following tools. So I'm gonna go ahead and use orange so it's more vivid. Um, that and there is that and I'm just going really light I'm just scribing this. and now 
I can go a little further, just place my pencil down and again, just really light scribes. Now I'm going to uh, measure the width and go from there. So again, at 332nd scale, here's the zero. Here is 50 here. Yeah, yeah, right here. So this is 50. And I want to call that good. Mm, a little bit more. There we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this. Now, if you're using a T-square, which I'm pretty sure you guys are, uh, you're gonna do this with a T-square. Hold your T-square tight. Um, try and get your scale as close as possible to perpendicular. You know, just do the best you can. And go from there, so. Okay, that is, I'm good with that. I can live with that. Um, probably not picture perfect, but this is tracing paper, so I can throw this down. And on a light board or tape it up to a glass and go from there. All right, so now I have my, my property lines. Um, Now I can go ahead and toss down my next one. So that was just to determine where the property lines are. And I can go from there to this next step. Okay, so now I can use my scale to create the pattern in 332nd scale. Now remember, the pattern is long dash, dash dash, long dash. So I'm gonna move this up here so I can brace what my scale up against the um, straight edge. Uh, you can just put your scale up to his and, and you know hold it down really tight. That That's fine too. Um, this just makes me comfortable. Now when you start the corner, uh, you can start with a short dash. Nope, I'm going to change it. Just go long dash. Okay, and then so I'm, go I'm going up to from zero to three feet and then skipping a foot Draw that as a foot, skip a foot, draw that a foot, and three feet. And that'll be my pattern. So skip a foot, dash, skip a foot, dash, skip a foot, long dash. And just repeat that pattern.
Okay, so now uh, I have that, and I know the street is on this side, so I can put a center line on street. Notice the center line. Long dash, dash, long dash, dash. So again, center line. Um, and now the distance from here to the street. Um, you know what? Don't even worry about the center line. Just, um, just label the street name and you're good. So, um, something light like this, and then use your architectural lettering to go ahead and label the street. Have it and now to do um, the house so I'm gonna go ahead and utilize this footprint uh, to place it on here uh, I know I want it right around this area you know plenty of room for a front yard and then plenty of room for a backyard I'm not gonna be too concerned uh, in this scenario there's no alley so and then I'm not concerned with the neighbors, just what's in these lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, let's go ahead and start doing this up. Okay, so I know I'm going to start with this dimension, 35. And 35 is right here. Ah, don't forget your setbacks. So measure your setbacks. And um, I'm just going to go 20 feet from the front. That's my setback. I'm not too concerned about, I'm just gonna go really light and uh, I just did a really, really light scribe. I know you can't even see it. But, um, and then from there, um, 20 feet um, for my project is, that's good. And then some of you have five feet here, five feet there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that as well. So I know that I cannot put my building within those setbacks. Check. Oop, I was off by a foot. There we go. So again, just really, really light. There you go. Um, sometimes there's setbacks in the back, um, but for argument's sake, let's say my setback is 15 feet back here. And here's 15. Again, super, super light. Don't go too heavy on this. And then now I know my structure can go in this area. And so I'm gonna use this as um, 
a way to gauge my front door. And so I know I have from here to here is 21. And then from, I gotta go down three feet and over uh, 19 feet. Um, but altogether, I need 40 feet. So, yep, that's plenty of room for the backyard. Uh, 40 feet max. Perfect. So, ah. Remember, this is a dash line. A hidden line. So, one, skip, skip. Okay, so that's 21. And then I gotta, I gotta come down three feet. So how I'm doing this, I am putting this on 73 and then I'm just gonna go one skip two that's three feet and then now I can go over 19 feet so I'm gonna set this to 19 feet Go from there. And that just happened to work out. Okay, so from there, I gotta go down 32 feet. So I'm just going to set this to 32 and go down from there. And this last one, I went a little long because this is a corner. So now, thirty-five feet.
11 feet. And I got to go this way, a foot and a half. So this, I'm just going to do a long line because it's really tiny. Uh, and then I got to go nine feet, nine feet this way. Take that measurement. Let me get that real quick. Mm, looks like six and a half feet. Always document and, and make sure that like, if you lose your place or whatever, something happens and you got to get up and go, like, I know I missed this um, and I kind of just did that in pencil. Um, try not to get lazy with this. this. This is documentation of the process. Keep it because sometimes you can lose your place. Emergencies happen, and you got to come back to to this, and you're gonna you're gonna be like, "Oh, where did I leave off of?" So um, I know I'm here, so I need to go over six and a half feet. Okay, so I went over one foot approximately, but I got to shift this over, but I need to mark the six. And so I'm going to mark the six right here. I'm going to start it a little bit, slide this over, and continue. And I'm good with that. Now, I just need to connect this line as long as I have So this is my floor plan outline. And now that I have that, I can start doing the roof line. And I'm going to show you how to do the roof. Um, I'm going to go ahead and erase a little bit right here. Just clean things up a little bit. Um, just so I don't get confused. Now. And 
And this is another reason why I did it super light. Because it comes off in one fell swoop. Good to go. Um, I could use this, but um, you know, this is a tutorial. Definitely use this to clean stuff up over here, over here. Use your racing shield. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is, I know I gotta go over um, two feet this way, and I'm not gonna go over two feet this way. I'm just gonna go straight and then something like this or, or maybe just straight I don't know I'm, I'm thinking how the roof is going to look like you know maybe a diagonal here um, or a, di a diagonal here and then I don't know kind of see where it wants to take me um, but first and foremost I'm going to offset these lines two feet uh, mainly this one, this one, this one. Um, if I offset this one two feet, uh, I suppose I could try that, um, this one. So let me go ahead and do that. And how to offset this is, definitely use your straight edge. And there you go. And you notice how I am choosing the lines that are vertical and then going from there. Um, and now what I can do is um, go this way. go I marked it up again just go really light describe it super light and here I'm not gonna go all the way here just go like that And the roof kind of builds itself once you know certain dimensions. Um, so we'll see how this goes. Um, all right, I kind of have a square, like I could just, I could do that. Um, but we do have to consider that these from corners go at a right angle or not a right angle 45 so the easiest way to do a roof is you know what let me get my smaller one this seems to be too big yes here we go So I can totally make a roof that covers all of that, or I can try and do something a little different. Um, it's really up to up to you on how you want to negotiate this. Um, but I think for this exercise, um, I might I might do something a little different. So here's what we're gonna do. 
And we'll try this. And again, very, very light. Just scribe. Super, super light. To that corner. To that corner. And... Wow, that kind of... Kind of just built itself. You see how the roof is just building itself? And now, I could probably just continue. Here and go to here. And I forgot to do two feet this way. So. Super, super light. And again, from this point, actually, not that point. This point. This can go down this way, and this can go down that way. And that's that. This is this is the roof. Done deal. Oh, this needs a valley right here. Yeah. Wait. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Valley right there. There we go. And actually, the roof is now changed because <laughs> I think I messed up. There we go. Use your racing shield and So now the roof is, it's done. I just need to clean up. And solidify it. Let me darken this in. Go ahead and use my um, nine. Actually, you know what, uh, where's my seven? There we go. I'll use my seven. So I'll use my seven. Go from there. Oop. Yeah, seven. And let's do this.
I saved this because I know that this will have to look like that. There we go. There's the roof. Now, um, I know the garage is right here. So I have um, the garage space. So the garage door. Um, I'll just get that off of the floor plan and uh, I'll determine my driveway and so let me find this real quick so the distance from here to here i can find it's 10 feet probably not up to code um, but let's just say this is existing again this is a project so um, feet so let's do this here to here and ah I made this dark but everything out because this is closest to to you so uh, the driveway, I'll just extend it out like here and extend it out here. And this is the little, let's do this. A little ramp that goes down into the streets so um, you know you don't um, you know go up and over a curb um, I can put planters in if I want uh, a particular walkway probably should do that um, so um, I would definitely measure it uh, but for the sake of this video let's just let's just press on Go here, um, probably clean that up. There we go. Um, you can label this driveway. Um, I would put a roof pattern over here. Um, Let's label this driveway. fences if you want to put a fence you can totally put a fence um, and if you're gonna do a gate you can probably do a gate like uh, door um, but let me see mm. actually you could just do a line Like that let's just say there's no there's no gate that way but you know maybe over here on this side um, there's a gate and well there we go you 
use your compass. And I'm not going to do it completely open. Let's just do it. That's if you want the gate to open out this way or the other way. It's it probably should go the other way, but oh well. There we go. Um, the backyard. If you want to do like a patio or anything like that, definitely put that in there. Uh, you know, indicate where uh, certain. like concrete is, and then if you got like, I don't know, a step, you can put that in there, uh, but they, it all has to be dimensioned. And so um, you can go from there, like, you know, here's planters, you can see planters, uh, roofing, remember to put, you know, just small little one, you don't have to go um, too crazy, the grass, um, let's just say all this is grass. Um, maybe I want a sidewalk. Uh, so I could put a sidewalk here. And I probably should measure, um, but I'm not. <laughs> so this is about five feet. I'll go from there and then grass. Actually, let's do this. If there's a planter right here, you know, I don't know, maybe here there's a planter. Um, and then maybe here. Yeah, maybe it goes out a little further. And it goes. up to the driveway, All right? And then if you wanna put little plants, I'm just making this grass. Um, back here, I don't know, I might, I might put a patio or a pool. Um, again, you're gonna have to do those dimensions, um, you know. So if you're going to do a pattern for your roof and you want it to be uniform, you can use your Ames lettering guide. I would totally recommend that. Do something like this. And then I'm just going super fast, but you could use your scale to create the pattern. Uh, I recommend you do that. This right here is a little sloppy, um, but I'm just showing you a pattern and then just go in between on the next one.
And you can see how a roof pattern has emerged. It wouldn't go all the way down to the line, uh, but definitely go all the way up top. There we go. And so you can see a roof pattern. You should have a little bit here, a little bit here, some here, here, and here. One on each panel. You should have a little bit. Um, all right. Oop, I missed a spot over here. I think I deleted it on accident. But yeah. So um, just a little bit. And you could even get a little fancy with it and say, you know what, let me, let me clean this up a little bit. And there you go. Um, so I'll also, uh, you can put a shadow. So if I want to put a shadow over here, Trees, again, you're going to have to put some sort of trees. Um, don't do it that quick. Uh, that's just me being, being me right now because uh, I, I kind of want to finish this video um, for you guys. If you have a stencil, use a stencil you know maybe this is a small tree here and a small one over here um, um, so don't do anything like this uh, your plants as well i probably should have did it in a better pencil, you can see that it is less clear depending on the pencil that you use. So choose the right pencil. You can clearly see what worked, what didn't work, make it look good. Um, again, shadows. If the sun is casting shadows going this way, then you're gonna have little shadows over here, over here, over here, and over here. Um, if you got um, a patio of some sort, let's just say oh, we have a patio. back here and you know, I again I probably should have measured but you know I'm, I'm trying to get this done as quick as possible for you um, and let's just say this patio has the uh, pieces of wood. We've all seen patios like this. Yeah. Go ahead and create that. And there you go. Oh, probably. There we go. There you go. Uh, and then you can label that patio. Um, you can probably erase a little bit here. And just hit, you know.
I would probably try and center that as much as possible uh, and then go ahead and write patio. Go from there. And you can see clearly how everything is starting to fall into place. You know, maybe there's some planters back here as well. Again, um, I probably should be measuring. I should know these distances. But again, I'm just trying to show you what your floor plan can, or your uh, site plan can look like. Okay, let's do this. Again, all the, the plants that we practice You know, maybe there's a big tree right here. Uh, you can use something to help you make this big tree. Uh, you can use a compass or uh, if you have a coin, coins will work as well. Uh, something like a nickel where the edges are, are um, rounded. Um, but let's just say there's, there's a big tree right here. Oops. And we'll continue with this tree. And this is proving to be a little bit difficult. I need to adjust just my needle. go. I would recommend doing your trees on your eight and a half by 11 and not your if you're going to do big circles and not your um, tracing paper, because this, this is proven to be a little bit too difficult. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's killing, the, it's killing the paper. Anyway, so you get the idea, uh, and then you can... And then don't forget to add the shadows. And when you're done, label it. Label it and we need to write a north arrow as well. Let 
And make sure you put the scale on there. Uh, north arrow. So uh, north is going this way. Do your best to just try and create a north arrow. Yeah, I'm just going too fast. Um, uh, so. There we go. I can write. North. Um, again, if this is all grass, make sure it's all grass. Um, if you have doors that lead to the outside and you want this to be, you know, concrete. set of stairs again I'm not checking my floor plan I'm just giving you an example um, again your stairs should be pretty similar to how your stairs are on the inside there you go there's probably some more using a hidden line because the door is probably right here um, and that's pretty much it. You know, you don't have to show trash cans or anything like that. Um, this is this is a basic site plan. Um, you know, do your best because you're going to be using. I know it. I use the second floor. I use the second floor on purpose because um, that's where the roof is. It's it's above the second floor. Um, but I got the footprint of the first floor in combination of the second floor, so you can see where the walls are. But technically, you're supposed to use the first floor. Uh, but for this assignment, just uh, just go ahead and do that. Um, all right, um, there's your site plan. Can you use color? You absolutely can. Um, again, take a photocopy. Don't use an original. Uh, this, take a photocopy of this, and, uh, and then start messing with color. Um, don't start shading. I wouldn't start shading right away. Uh, photocopy this, darken it up with some ink, and then start shading, use different medias, play with it, um, really get into it. All right, that's all I have.